Great. Well, I'm Chris Carlson, and I'm a manager of applied research at uh, here at BrainChip. And uh, I'll be introducing something called MetaTF, which is a machine learning framework uh, that we developed here at BrainChip that will allow people to um, deploy machine learning applications on our hardware device, which is called Akita. And uh, I should thank Dylan very much for his good introduction into event-based hardware because that's what Akita is. It's, it's an event-based hardware platform and it's very power efficient. So I'm going to tell you about this uh, MetaTF framework that we've, that we've developed. Okay. All right. Let's see here. All right. Great. So. All right. So you want to so you want to run ML applications at the edge, right? And the problem usually is twofold. There's a hardware problem and a software problem. So first, let's talk about this, the hardware problem. So usually the only way to attain this kind of next generation power, latency, size, uh, is to use something called domain-specific architectures, or DSAs. And that's exactly what, what Dylan has presented and, 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 and what, what, what we've presented at other uh, tiny MLs, which, which, which is you know, a, piece, a, a hardware device that is optimized specifically to run at the edge. And these, these hardware devices are, um, usually they make a, a very specific trade-off. And that trade-off is they trade uh, flexibility for efficiency, okay? So they usually run a smaller subset of operations than, than let's say, a, G, a GPU, and they have, you know, tighter power and tighter um, uh, memory and compute constraints. So, so that's, that's the first problem is, okay, you need this hardware and it's a little bit more constrained, but, you, but if you don't have the hardware, you're not going to achieve kind of the power numbers you want at the edge. So um, the second problem is the software issue. And the software issue, okay, is the following. You, you say, okay, I have these uh, DSAs and I have a, you know, a TensorFlow model or whatever, and I want to deploy this on there. And the problem is th these DSAs have many significant constraints that make model compatibility, training, and deployment extremely challenging. Okay, so the question is, okay, how do I, how do I get from a TensorFlow model on, that I trained on a GPU to you know, the Akita and SOC. Uh, so, so to solve problem number one, this is something we've, we've talked about at previous tiny MLs, uh, BrainChip has developed a powerful and efficient neuromorphic system on a chip called Akita. And so uh, I won't be talking about that, the, the hardware specifically today very much. Um, what I'm really talking about is our solution to problem number two, the software problem. And that's the idea that we, we've developed something called MetaTF, which is a machine learning framework that takes the CNN uh, machine learning models of today, of today to the normal for hardware solutions of tomorrow. And of course, the hardware solutions of tomorrow, we're, we're implying, of course, Akita, which is our you know, hardware solution. So Meta TF, just a quick background. Meta, we're, we're talking about the, you know, the, the pretty much the, the Greek word for after or post. So it, the idea is supposed to say something like, uh, you know, this is something after you've done stuff with TensorFlow TF training and stuff. Now what happens afterwards? You know, how, how do you deploy this thing? So that's why we call it meta TF. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about this. So the meta TF, uh, a machine learning framework, it supports two types of models, uh, deep learning SNN models and native SNN models. Uh, so DL SNN models are genuine SNN models that are converted to a key to SNN models. Now, uh, as Dylan mentioned in his talk, spiking neural network models are, are really these kind of event-based models. And uh, the important thing for people who are into machine learning right now to understand is you don't need to understand spiking neural network models. We're just using them for their efficiency when we implement them on hardware, okay? So you start with some sort of CNN model and you could convert it to an SNN model that runs on Akita. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know how to do the conversion. We do it, we make it seamless, okay? And so that's the first type of model, these DL, because they're trained on deep learning, DL SNN models. Uh, and, and again, the idea is DL, uh, DL CNN models are designed and trained using TensorFlow Keras and converted to Akita DL SNN models using our, our, our tool, which we call CNN to SNN. That's the name of it. Um, okay, so that's the first type of the uh, model that we support. The second type of model that we support is something called native SNN models. So these are models that if, if you're interested 
interested specifically in building spiking neural network models, um, you know, from the ground up, so to speak. Well, these are models, they're usually composed of a few dense layers and they often include a specific uh, feature extractor. You can, you can build these and run them in a key as well. So, so that's if you're interested specifically in building spiking neural network models. So the idea is that these these native SNN models are constructed using the Akita native API, which is uh, closely inspired from the Keras API. Okay, so so those are the two two types of models we'll, we'll, that we support with our Meta TF framework, and I'll talk mostly about DL SNN models because uh, I think there, there are a lot more people right now that that have some sort of tr uh, TensorFlow model that they want to convert. So let's talk about that. All right. So here's what this framework looks like. So the first thing to note that is that deep learning professionals, they do not need to learn any new frameworks to start using the, uh, the our, our machine learning framework, MetaTF, okay? That, the reason is because you can simply build your models in TensorFlow Keras and convert them for deployment on the Akita neural processor in just a few steps. And, and before I get into that workflow, notice that, that when we built this, we built it basically the same way that that most people use TensorFlow Keras, which is you do pip install TensorFlow or whatever, you know. So we have the same thing where you do pip install Akita and pip install uh, CNN to SNN. So it's very similar. If you're a machine learning person, you will notice the flow and, you, and it will be very similar to how you're already working. But 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 the basic idea is um, you design your CNN your CNN in TensorFlow. Uh, you train your CNN in TensorFlow. And when you when you quantize it, that means you know go down from 32 bit to let's say four bit or two bit or one bit weights and activations. When you quantize it, you use our tool, okay? But the, the important thing here is it's still in your uh, your uh, TensorFlow Keras universe. You're still in that universe the whole time. You're still doing these with these models. So then there's you can retrain these models, okay? And I'll talk a little bit more about that. If you if you lose any accuracy, because you could lose a small amount of accuracy when you quantize from 32 bit down to four bits, uh, I should I should mention here that our, our hardware supports at most four bits. So we're really four bit activations, four bit weights, and this saves you a ton of memory. And we find that we we um, we haven't lost more than two percent accuracy once we've retrained things if we need to. So it's pretty good. So so anyway, the the idea is now you can convert this thing with with a few commands, and I'll, I'll and I'll show you that later. And then finally, it'll be deployed on on Akita. So this this diagram to the right here is is kind of what it looks like. Everything in blue, light blue or dark blue, is still running in you know it's Python and it's it's uh, TensorFlow, uh, sorry, uh, Keras Tensor, uh, TensorFlow Keras the whole time. And so each one of these things you're doing. In there, and these are just with our tools that you're doing it. You're still, you're still doing these operations on TensorFlow Keras models. So, the idea is that when when you're done, you'll convert it, and then finally, this will be an Akita model, so a DLSNN model that will run on our hardware very efficiently. And so, the important thing to understand is that you you could lose a small amount of accuracy when you do quantization, and then you might need to retrain your model to get the accuracy back. But when you convert from a DLCNN to a DLSNN, then you're not going to lose any accuracy. Okay, it's it's functionally the same same model. Okay, so that's important to to point out. All right, so here's here's a little example here. So let's say we you have M, you know a classic MNIST example, and you've got uh, a TensorFlow model that that you've built, and you've got it ready to go. And you say, okay, what do I do next? All right, so first, what you would do is you would import this function called check model compatibility. And then call it on your model. So in this case, your model, your, your TensorFlow Keras model that you built for, is called MNIST Keras. You call this, and it will just automatically tell you, yes, this is compatible with Akita. Remember, because it's a, it's a DSA, so it's going to have you know a small subset of operations. We focus on feed forward CNNs, so there are some operations that we we support many operations uh, for for uh, feed forward CNNs, but there are some that we don't. So this would this would catch those. And so then the, this will tell you, okay, you need to change this or whatever. And and let's say let's say for some reason you change your model a little bit, and you go, okay, I need to retrain this this model. I just wanna I just wanna make sure it's compatible. So I'm gonna change the architecture a little bit. So because it's it's still your TensorFlow Keras model, you would just you know compile and run fit just like you always do. Okay. So there's nothing fancy here. All we've done is have a, a an extra function to check is this compatible or not. 
with with Akita. So so now let's keep going. So now uh, let's import two other functions, uh, quantize and convert, and let's take a look at it. So now that you have a model that is Akita compatible, you want to say, okay, this is 32-bit. Now I want to quantize this model. All right. So you can you can you can call our quantize function, and you'll pass your TensorFlow Keras model, and then some other arguments that say, here's how much I want to quantize it. You know, so if you if you have uh, uh, most of our uh, weights, we quantize down to 4-bit, and then your activations quantize down to 4-bit, but we allow the user to quantize just the first layer to 8-bit weights, because that sometimes preserves more accuracy. So that's what this is done. And what it does is it returns a quantized version of your model. But, this, and this is important to understand, this is still a TensorFlow Keras model. So now that you have a quantized TensorFlow Keras model, you can go to the next step and say, okay, well, what's the score of this? Let me just run evaluate on this because again, it's the same type of model and you'll get some score. So for a lot of, um, for, it depends on your application, but if it's kind of these, these smaller applications with maybe, um, I don't know, fewer classes you, you, and you quantize down to four bit, you would, you would notice not very much of a, of a drop in accuracy. Because remember, this is the only place where there's a possibility for accuracy drop. Uh, but let's say you're doing a way more complex model and, and you have to actually retrain it because you lost some accuracy when you quantize from 32-bit down to 4-bit. So, so you could do that. And, and the best part is, again, this is still in TensorFlow Keras, so you would just use your fit function the same way you used it before. So just understand that we have this entire API built around TensorFlow Keras so that you can use it very easily. Okay, you don't have to change your workflow very very much at all. Okay, so now let's say you've, you've trained this model, you've, you've, you've retrained it, you've got the accuracy you want. So now that's the accuracy you're, you're pretty much guaranteed when you convert it. Now the only step is to convert and deploy it. So here's the convert step. It's a single function call. What I'm doing is I'm passing my quantized model, which is still a TensorFlow Keras model, and some additional arguments, which we could talk about um, uh, later if people have questions. And what it returns, this is an Akita model, which is a DL SNN model. So, so now this is we finally less we've we've finally left TF Keras land, and now we're in Akita land. So, uh, now that this is a, an SNN model, the only step left is to deploy it. Okay, and so to deploy it, we can import two additional functions from from our Akita module. And those are model and backend. So first we just create a model type. That's gonna be our hardware model. So you pass it the software model. That's the Akita software model that you've converted. And then you simply tell it what backend to use. If you have the hardware, you say backend type dot hardware. And, and, that, and we have a compiler that automatically compiles it, distributes it on the hardware, runs it seamlessly. And the accuracy that you get for when you convert it, or sorry, after you've after you've retrained it, after you've quantized it, you'll that's the same accuracy. And so when you when you, when you say results equal, you know, mnist hardware dot predict, it's going to give you this, the same results that that you should expect. Okay, so that's the important part, and that's it. So that's that's how you've done it. You've taken something from TensorFlow Keras, and it, now it runs on Akita, which is an event based. Uh, hardware device that's very power efficient and 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 very fast. So just as a quick sum summary, uh, MetaTF is an intuitive framework to train, convert, and deploy machine learning models to Akita. And uh, the reason it's so intuitive for for a lot of people is because we really just base it off of TensorFlow Keras because that's what a lot of people are doing for this for this stuff. Um, and I should note that we have a, a quickly growing library of DL, SNN, and native SNN models for a variety of applications, and they're freely available, and we're, we're adding many more uh, each, each week. We're, we're adding more. Um, and so here's some examples. So on the left-hand side are some deep learning spike and neural network models and their applications. So we have a lot of image classification and person detection models, um, face detection and classification, object detection, keyword spotting, uh, there's the dynamic vision sensor that 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 Dylan mentioned in uh, in, in his talk, um, and uh, 3D point cloud image classification as well. So uh, those those are what we have for DL SNNs. For native SNNs, we have kind of these these kind of smaller 
models that, that, that run on kind of time series data, uh, say applications that do uh, fault detection, uh, gustatory classification, and olfactory classification. And so finally, I just want to mention that our models come with single shot edge learning enabled. And that's the idea that in hardware, you can retrain this with, with just a single single presentation. It's a proprietary learning algorithm that we have evolved, and these, these models have the capability to do that in, in hardware. And so for more information, you can go to our documentation there. And uh, uh, again, just a quick uh, shout out to our sponsors. Bear with me for one minute. We have different categories. We have executive sponsors, first one being ARM. Then we have Qualcomm. We have Samsung. Platinum sponsors. Ada Compute. Lattice Semiconductor. Gold sponsors. Brainchip. Babel Labs, DSP Group, Edge Impulse, Emza, Gray Matter Labs, Green Waves, Hymax, Imagimob, Latent AI, Maxim Integrated, Quixo, Reality AI, SenseML, Silicon Labs, Sentient, Google TensorFlow, XMOS, and lastly, Silver Sponsors, Edge Cortex, Hachi, and since that's...